Welcome to this Jeremy Bamber and White House Farm podcast. In this week's episode, an actor reads the evidence of Mr. Michael Abel, which was provided to Essex Police on the 30th of September 1985. Mr. Abel was employed as Head of Social Services for Westminster City Council, a job he had undertaken since 1981. In his evidence, Mr. Abel explains his department's involvement with Sheila Caffell from 1981 and their growing concerns about the welfare of Nicholas and Daniel. I am the above, and I have been employed by Westminster County Council since 1981 as a team leader of social services. I am in charge of six other social workers. From records, I am able to say that the City of Westminster Social Services Department had dealings with the Caffell family between August 1982 and November 1983. The family consisted of the mother, Sheila Caffell, nee Bamber, and her twin sons, Nicholas and Daniel Caffell. Sheila had previously been married and had separated from her husband, Colin Caffell. This case was referred to us from Camden Town Council Services Department on the 16th of the 8th, 1982. This was due to Sheila moving into the area. From records, I can say that there are two case conferences about the family at Camden. The first was held on the 4th of August 1981, where from the minutes it was discussed about the concern of the mother's lack of ability to seek medical advice promptly when the twins were ill. There is reference that at this time there was a scold on the left knee and stomach of Daniel and an ear infection. In the notes of the conference, there is no evidence to suggest that these were injuries particularly, as the children were not placed on a non-accidental injury register. It is also mentioned that there was a burn on Daniel's cheek. In this conference, Sheila was described as forgetful and disorganised, but there was no evidence of any psychiatric history. A Mr Dodds, who was her GP at the time, commented that she had no psychiatric history and her only medication had been night sedation. This doctor had referred Sheila to Hammersmith Hospital for cosmetic surgery to improve her modelling chances. At the end of this conference, it was arranged for a further conference to take place on the 19th of March 1982. By referring to these minutes, I am able to say that Sheila was pursuing the whereabouts of her natural mother. It is mentioned that Sheila showed great affection towards her children. The children were, at this time, however, with day foster parents, re-employed by the London Borough of Camden. The minutes do not explain specifically the reason for this. There is also references to Sheila having been admitted into hospital on two occasions, but does not state the reason why. Up until the 16th of August 1982, I can say that Barbara Babick of Camden Social Services was the social worker allocated to this family. Between the 16th of August and the 23rd of December 1982, Roger Carruthers was allocated the social worker for this family from the City of Westminster Social Services. In this time, he organised a day nursery place for the two children at Carlton Hill Nursery. 86 Carlton Hill, St. John's Wood, NW8. Roger described Sheila as muddled in her childcare. She was nervous and lacked confidence. He also states that she was a heavy smoker of cigars. She spoke a lot of various types of employments which she would like to have had and secured. Roger felt that this was more wishful thinking on her behalf. It was felt that the care of the children was adequate and no reason for us to take any action regarding the children. There was no other incidents which caused enough concern for holding a further case conference, and on the 23rd of December 1982, the case was closed. It was reopened again on the 4th of May 1983, when Nicholas had a head injury, which was caused, it was thought, by him falling from a taxi. This was confirmed by the local police. This was dealt with by the Paddington Green Children's Hospital and the social worker there, Sue Elliott Brown. There was no further action about this incident. On the 1st of June 1983, 
Sheila phoned the office to ask the name of the social worker at Paddington Green as she had a problem to discuss with her. I do not know what these problems were. In September 1983, we received a phone call from Carton Hill Day Nursery expressing concern for the children as they had heard that Sheila was in hospital. The twins were taken away from the day nursery, returning on the 6th of October 1983. It was presumed that they were staying with Sheila's parents. On the 7th of October, Sheila contacted us by phone and explained that she had recovered from a three-month breakdown and now wished to see a social worker. She was particularly interested in her future, taking up courses particularly in drama. She was concerned also with the care of the children, as her husband at the time had no suitable accommodation. She wanted to share the care of the children with her husband. The arrangement for looking after the children between Sheila and Colin seemed to work out pretty well on the whole. During this phone call, she stated that she had attended St Andrew Psychiatric Hospital. On the 13th of October, we arranged to call, but unfortunately there was no reply. Sheila was again seen on the 21st of November 1983 at her home in Maida Vale. It was discussed about Sheila wanting to take up a hotel receptionist course and her worries about the care of the children. There were no other problems with the children. It was thought that Sheila still lacked confidence by this social worker, Patricia Floyd. Sheila stated that she felt she was now over her depression period, but was worried about it happening again and therefore wanted to try to find herself a job or course. This was our last involvement with the Caffell family, and the case was closed. Roger Carruthers is no longer working for the City of Westminster Social Services, However, Patricia Floyd, who visited Sheila on the last occasion, is. If you'd like to join our mailing list for the latest updates on the case as they happen, please email us via our website www.jeremy-bamba.co.uk.